Okay, here's one more demonstration of wrangling this divergent climate data. Again, I've got two periods of time I'm trying to show on one map. One is a 30-year average um, of temperatures um, deviating from a baseline average period of temperatures. So this is the change in temperature from this 30-year period from uh, the 1990s to 2020 um, against a baseline 30-year period. And then just for demonstration's sake, I averaged the last three years of time, um, 2019 against 2021, um, or something like that, against the same 30-year period. Okay, so that's the setup. We have two ranges of divergent values. Um, I've got a minimum of a little bit of cooling, 0.4 degrees of cooling Celsius, and um, almost 4.5 degrees Celsius of warming, and the more recent time period, and then negative or 0.5 degrees cooling and around 3 degrees Celsius warming from the earlier time period against my baseline. So I somehow need to account for both of these. I want a color ramp, a divergent color ramp, um, where 0 is going to be displayed in a neutral color. Um, 3 degrees Celsius warming will be displayed in a lighter warmer color than four and a half degrees Celsius will be in the darkest warm color. And then these values should be very, very light cooling colors, if that makes sense. They shouldn't be dark cooling colors. All right, so let's dig in. Um, we'll start with this one here, head into the symbology. And of course, we want to start with the divergent color ramp. And I'm going to show you a little bit more nuanced than just the plain old blue to red with white in the middle. This one I don't like because the yellow implies warming and that's our neutral color. But I kind of like this spectral. Um, it offers a little bit more change, but again, our neutral color is yellow, which implies warming. So we have to fix that. And we can do that in here really quickly, but first we need to flip it because right now our cool colors are our warming values and we need to change that. This middle guy, we can change to white. We want min-max. And because our range of values is going to go from, um, at the most, 4.5, let's exaggerate this and go for a minimum, minus 5 degrees Celsius to 5 degrees Celsius. Now that's going to force the middle color to be 0 and gives us room for both ranges of values. Okay. So let's go back in here. We can look on the map and see if there are any areas of cooling. If there were, it would be right in here. So if we click in here and use the um, Explore tool, this looks warm, but it's coming up as a negative, slightly negative value. So I'm going to adjust the symbology so that that light green color is a little bit cooler than it's naturally showing. It's a little bit of a warm green. And here's the trick to doing that go into the color properties, and I like to use the HSV values because it gives me the ability to lighten. Um, but I start in RGB because I can shift this toward the green. And if you watch here, that's all I'm trying to do is just make it a little cooler, but it's getting too dark. That's why I like to go into the HSV and lighten it up a little bit. And what I'm looking for is something that's kind of equal in contrast, but cooler. And you can see that that blends really well, right? But just has a cooler tint to it. So how does that look on our map? It definitely looks like a little bit of a cooler pocket there. But because we don't have a ton of cooling, it's gonna be pretty light. Um, we'll apply the same color ramp to the next one and we'll check it out there too. Um, but we could actually save this as a layer file. And then we'll go into the symbology of the other one and import from a layer file. So one of the problems is, is it adjusts these values here. We know this went from approximately four and a half to um, a cooling of around 0.3, um, but that's, that's fine. Uh, let's take a look at the map. 
and we can see that it is definitely a different set of values, right? And we've got that cooling pocket here, but we should go in and check just to make sure that our values are cooling, approaching zero, and then moving into warming. Okay, so we've got good symbology here. Now what we need to wrangle with is how we set up a good legend for these two and properly displayed data sets. We know that one legend will suffice because we've got the correct um, values. The darker colors are showing higher values. So one, one legend will work for both maps. One thing you probably know that I like to do is work outside of ARC when it's um, easier for me. And so one thing that we can think about using is a screenshot of this color ramp. But if we go in to formatting, we can see the way we've set it up. This is zero, zero degrees Celsius change, one degree warming, two, three, four, five. And so this is cooling in one, two, three, four, five degrees C. We could leave our color ramp just like this. Um, we don't have any values that are um, cooler or larger in absolute value than negative, basically 0.5 degrees C, so we don't need any of these values. So that's part of your um, choice that you need to make as a cartographer is whether to include the entire color ramp um, and leave your audience wondering if there are these values on the map. But for symmetry, it might make sense. Um, it might help tell the story that we really just see these colors, or you could truncate the um, legend and just show from maybe negative one degree C to positive five. But let's start by just grabbing a screenshot and you all have different ways of doing this on your computers. I'm gonna throw mine in PowerPoint. You could use Canva, um, basically user's choice. Okay, so here's our color ramp. Um, and you can, of course, crop this. You can, of course, go in and add text as you see fit. And you should, of course, add text, including units for your values, um, tick marks, um, maybe bars that go across to, to break it up. Um, one thing that I saw a student do recently that I thought was incredibly clever is they put a bar from um, the range of values that represented one time period and then the range of values that represented the other time period. And I'm going to set that up really quick and then I'll show you compared to the map. Okay, I pushed the magic button, <laughs> spent the last, I won't tell you how many minutes working on this. Um, so first crack, um, definitely not perfectly dialed in. Uh, and, you know, I think it would be fun to critique this and you know as a group we could come up with a really effective legend that would work um, for everybody's maps you know how much text is too much too much text um, i always work to um, reduce duplicated words so maybe getting rid of um, maybe this doesn't need to be here and it could just be warming and cooling um, trying to figure out a way to show this without getting too lost in the details. Obviously, this is going to accompany the map, so it doesn't need to say everything. We just want it to be clear, uh, thorough, and um, detailed enough, but really just showing the trends. Um, you know, to that, to that end, I don't know that these need to be negative values. They are in the map, but they demonstrate cooling. So I think it's okay to just leave them as that. What I would recommend now is grabbing a screenshot of this and putting it back on your map, insert it as an image, um, and there you go. 